Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're all doing well today. I hope things are getting a little better for you. Uh, I know that with all the stuff that's going on in the world today, we all need a little pick-me-up sometime. And I've got a, a story I want to share with you. I'm going to wait till the end of this. Uh, in case you don't want to hear it, you can watch about the sword and then cut off. But I hope you listen because it made a big difference in my life and I hope it does in yours as well. Today we're going to talk about a sword that is very popular. It was made during the Civil War. It was used by the Union Artillerymen. And a lot of people say, why are there two styles of artillery sword from the Union Army during the Civil War? One is the short sword, like we talked about a while back, that looks like this. And then there is the version like this that looks more like a regular full length saber. They made the saber length like this, like we have here, because they were intended for mounted artillery, meaning that they were on a horse. Or they would have, uh, and the other style was for uh, the regular enlisted men that were on, working the cannon crews and needed a short sword that would be used a lot of times more as a tool as much as a weapon. This one is the Model 1840 Mounted Artilleryman's Sword for enlisted men. They made these, the first order was 1844. They got delivered in 1845. So for 1845 till 1865, they delivered 24,602 of these. A lot, but it's 20 years worth of production. You don't see many of those first contract ones because they only were for 500. And you don't see many of the 1865 compared to the other ones because 2,000 of them were in that 1865 delivery. They were made by the most famous of all Civil War makers for edged weapons. We talk about them all the time because they were very important. The Ames Manufacturing Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts. And they made artillery swords, they made cavalry swords, they made officer swords, they made swords for about anybody. If you had a uniform, Ames made a sword that could go with you. This one is for the mounted artillery. Model 1840, but made, you can see the date here, 1864. They made them during the war in larger quantities, of course, than the earlier dates because they were needed. It's nice because this one has not only that 1864 date, the US and the sub-inspector JH. There were several guys that inspected that used the JH initials. So uh, we've got all of those markings. On the back side of the blade, we have this, the Ames marking, and Ames actually used a few different markings over the years. You'll see an arch, you'll see a straight line, you'll see a scroll with Ames in it. And it's just another variation to collect. Like we needed one more reason to want to collect different variations of Civil War swords. So they knew that someday there were gonna be collectors like us that wanted to have all of them. We don't want one, we want all of them. So model 1840 made in 1864, no reason you make a sword in 1864 than the intention of going straight to war because it was still going on heavy in 1864. It's got the maker's mark, you can read it. A lot of times, these swords, you can't read the maker's mark. And it happens for two reasons. The stamping was, they were stamping into steel. And so it wasn't easy to do. And two, they were more worried about getting it into service than they were a perfectly crisp, clear maker's mark. So you don't see it as often that you can see all of the marking. That just happens. So it's something that as collectors, once you look around, you realize all the markings aren't always perfect. It helps if they are, but they're not always perfect. So the swords themselves, they had two different styles. The first style, well, let me tell you about the second one first. Second one first. Up the top of the scabbard, they have what's called a throat. And that is simply the little piece that basically holds the sword from rattling in the saber. The first model didn't have a throat. 
it had a spring on the inside of the scabbard that was designed to take care of the same thing. It didn't, so they started using a throat, an external throat. That's one way you know that this is a correct style scabbard for that sword. And the scabbards don't always interchange. Just because you've got two Ames made swords of the type two, they don't always interchange. This one fits perfectly. It's got a brass hand guard like this. They have a wooden core on the handle that is wrapped in a black bridle leather. And then they put a double twist brass wire around that grip like this. This one's all nice and solid and it's pretty. And the brass has a lot of copper content to it. That's what gives it this pretty copper tone flavor. And it looks good. It's just a pretty sword all the way around. So you've got original grip, original wire, pretty color, original scabbard, good markings, full length blade. It checks every box on the I would like to have it in my collection list. So great sword. You can see it on Shiloh Relics. You can also see a couple of variations of those early uh, foot artillery swords. I've got a, a lot of swords on there. I'm going to be writing more up. This is the only one I think that I've got right now of artillery. So you better get on there and get it quick. As of the time of this video, it's on there, but I get new stuff all the time. I write it up every chance I get. This morning, I've been writing up and editing and putting pictures on there and my caffeine is going like this. So I do everything I can to get it all on there, but it's just me. I'm a one row mule. I have to do it one piece at a time, but I hope you go on there and look around and see some stuff that will make you want to add something to your collection. And even if you don't add something to your collection, maybe you'll learn something and you'll enjoy it because uh, I try to make this fun for people because it is, it's a great hobby. And I'm so fortunate to get to what, do what I do. Uh, but I thought about not sharing with this with you guys, but it moved me. And I think it happened for a reason. And I think I know what the reason is. And I'm gonna tell you, if it's not, hey, I tried. Those of you that know me or know my story, my, my wife died three years ago, Lori. I loved her. Uh, she's still with me every bit of the way. Uh, I've met somebody new. She treats me better than I ever dreamt I could be treated, but I still miss Lori. And there's some times where I just lose it. And the other day I was sitting there and a song came on the radio that she and I used to listen to. And I just, I lost it. I just started bawling like a baby. And there wasn't nobody in the office Nobody was looking at me. Nobody knew anything. That I was just sitting there by myself, and I was so glad because I was having a full-fledged come apart. I, and it happens sometimes. And I've learned I just work through it, and I'll be there when, when I get out the other side. Uh, and the phone rings, and it's this lady. And didn't recognize the voice, didn't recognize the name on the caller ID. And she said, uh... I was gonna leave a message. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but I'd be glad to help you if I can. And I was having a hard time trying to make it sound like I wasn't just having a breakdown. Uh, and she said, I was wa I've watched you on Road Show, Antiques Roadshow for years. Said, I was watching one of the episodes right now and something told me to stop and I Googled your name and I called because God told me to tell you that he loves you. And I just, I, I didn't know what to say. I broke into tears and I said, how did you know? Cause nobody knew what I was going through at that moment in my life. And just out of the blue, this lady I've never spoken to and she was so kind and she was so sweet and I don't even know her name. Uh, and she told me, she said, just something told me that I needed to call you right now and do it. And my pastor, uh, Helen Hamilton, she told me something one time. She said, if we understood it all, he wouldn't be that powerful of a God. And at the time she said it, it hit me, but I didn't, it didn't soak in. And after Lori died, I was not, I didn't want to ever acknowledge any God that would leave my children without a mama. And 
I was bitter. I was bitter and I was angry at everybody in the world. And that, uh, that was something that has helped me a lot is, is thinking about that. And I still have a hard time, but that call was everything to me at that moment. And that lady had no earthly idea she was about to change my view of life. Uh, but I'm so thankful that I got that call. And I think that call, and the reason I'm telling you all this, is that if you have somebody that you know is struggling right now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pick up that phone. I want you to call them. And you don't have to tell them you, you love them because she didn't tell me she loved me. She said, God loves you. And just pick up that phone and call somebody that you think might be struggling and say, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. Because that can make all the difference in the world to somebody that needs a little bit of encouragement. And I'm thankful to that lady. I'm, over, the, over the last three years, I have had folks. There was a lot of folks that I didn't particularly care for that came to the front when she died and was there for me. And I had a lot of people that I loved that went away from me that I didn't hear from at all. And it hurt. <laughs> but it makes me appreciate those ones that are there. And I hope that all of you are that one that's there for somebody. And if you ain't got nobody that calls you today, I hope you know that I care about you and that I hope the best for each one of you. And I'm sorry this has been long. It's been a little long-winded, but I was so lucky to still be here because there was times I didn't want to be. And... I'm thankful because of folks like that lady that called out of the blue. If it was that, if he, if we understood it all, it wouldn't be that powerful of a God. I love y'all and I'll catch you next time.